Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm George Grisham, and we're speaking about insurance. This lecture is uh, number 1.1. One are still basics. So we're very, very slowly moving into the fascinating world of insurance. And what we're going to speak about today is um, an interesting thing. How to make certain what have we insured, all right? What means against what, or what we have covered? And here we are only talking terms, different terms of a contract of insurance. In these terms, we will take four of them. First, big world at large has different perils or risks. Some of them are insurable, some of them are not. All right. These perils or risks, they may be physical, economical, legal. They can cause, and we have to prove the causation, a damage or loss, again, financial or material or legal as expenses in the subject matter and short. If this damage or loss occurred to the subject matter insured, which is related to the insured, our insured, whom we want to protect, and there is an insurable interest, then this loss or damage become a loss occurrence, a loss event under a particular policy of insurance or not. Why under or not? Here we have C and D letters up there. Is because um, you've got a policy of insurance, and this policy may or may not cover a particular type of loss. An example: marine policy. I love everything marine. I spent thirty-six years on marine insurance. A marine policy may cover storm damage to a ship by a huge heavy storm. Point A here, risk or peril, okay? If we prove that damage to ship's hull was caused by that storm, and causation can be direct, indirect, that all depends on the wordings. Anyway, if we prove that a particular storm, which we call peril or risk, has caused damage to ship's hull, we have proven point B, that there is a loss or a damage. Then, if this ship turns out to be operated or managed by our insured, we have an insurable interest. And a simple loss becomes a loss occurrence, an occurrence, an event from insurance point of view. But, then we have to look into the contract of insurance, policy, certificate, or whatever. And if it turns out that the owner of the ship, the operator of the ship, has only insured total loss, whilst we have a case of partial loss, damage to the ship, damage to the hull of the ship, is not total loss, then apologize, this particular type of loss is not covered by this particular policy of insurance. Point B not proven, or vice versa. We have, let's say, all risks cover where damage to hull is insured, then we have coverage. So every particular loss or every particular event has to answer to these four different questions. A, whether there was a risk or a peril. B, whether this particular risk or peril has caused a loss or damage. C, whether this loss or damage to a particular vessel is insured, i.e. whether there is an insurable interest between the loss and damage and the insured, whatever he may be or she may be. And then whether it is covered under policy of insurance. So we have risks or perils, 
damage or loss, loss occurrence from the insurance point of view, and actual loss covered. Seems to be simple, A, B, C, D. And this particular gradation works in all types of insurance. Your brother drives a car, and unfortunately, while going out of your drive, of his drive, he damages another person's car. So the risk is actually a road accident, the risk or peril. Then, whether the damage to the other car, we have to ask whether the damage to the other car has been caused by this particular collision. If yes, then we have the causation between the risk or peril and the damage or loss. Then, further on, we are now looking at your brother's policy of third-party motor, third-party liability, yes. And we have to find out whether there is insurable interest, i.e. whether your brother is covered under a particular policy of motor third-party liability. So whether this loss or damage can become a loss under a policy of insurance, covered under the policy of insurance. And then, which would be our point C in this little scheme, and then point D, which kind of policy he has in the, his glove compartment, whether it's just a, you know, damage to Casca only, own damage policy. Yes, I know they don't exist. Usually you have only third party liability policy or third party fire and theft. But let's pretend that there are two different types of policies as we have out there in the wild east of Europe. So if you only cover your Casca, the hull of your car, the third party liability will not be damaged, uh, will not be insured, i.e. point C will never become point D. So here we are describing the gradual transformation of an event into a loss insured, i.e. a peril, a loss or damage, a loss occurrence, and finally a loss covered under terms and conditions of insurance. It all seems to be quite simple until you get into details because, of course, the devil is in detail. And you know how much I love marine insurance. And here we have a little, little, um, well, well, let's call it scheme. It took me about half a year together with uh, my friend, Mr. Nikolai Salonko. For about five years, we were writing this book. Not two volumes of this book, actually. That's volume one. It's about cargo insurance, but actually it covers all sorts of insurance theory, and most of the schemes they come from this book. So this book are types of losses covered under marine policy, and that's exactly when we need to move from C to D. You are looking into a particular policy, and you have to find out whether total loss is covered, and or whether partial loss is covered where the charges, expenses are covered, in short, because there are different types of marine policies, and very much the same, there are different types of policies of third-party liability and so on and so forth. So you have to know a lot types of losses, and you have to understand whether they're included in a particular policy. So this is only a sample of types of losses. We're not going into details, but believe me, there are lots of them. So we have looked at events. And how we differ between a uh, risk or peril, which may or not may be insured, loss or damage caused by uh, uh, the peril by this risk, then an insurable loss, which has to be connected because of the insurable interest present, and finally a loss covered under a particular contract of insurance. So you have four positions and three connecting um chains of uh, connections that's about it for today we were talking about what can you be insured against or from thank you very much for your attention i'm george grishan and let's continue bye